I was born in Liverpool, England, March 6, 1923. He was uh, manager of uh, grocery stores, chain of grocery stores. But he died very young. Did your mother work as well at the time? My goodness, no. I'm the youngest of nine. <laughs> I was told it was compulsory. The women, um, now mind you, this was near the end of the, the women at 18 got um, their crawling up papers, as we call them, and uh, you had to go unless you uh, could give a good reason, like I was working at 18 and my boss was able to pull strings and say he couldn't do without me, he had to train somebody. And what they did, everybody had to do something in England. The older women, like the woman who took my place, had a 14-year-old boy, so they, don't, they didn't make them go in the forces, but they had to work. So. She, I was a bookkeeper and she came and learned my job and we got away with it for two years. So I was 20 before they suddenly decided that was long enough and that you just get your papers like the men and you go. Otherwise you go to jail. Now you did have a choice, you could go what we called on war work. Okay. Like you could go in a factory and make armaments or all that sort of thing. But uh, I, I picked the forces and uh, at that time they were kind of thinning out I think and they said they didn't want any more um, wrens as we were called. Um, would I uh, take the army? And I, I said, well, no, I wanted the Navy, because by that time I had two brothers in the Navy. And whatever answer I gave impressed them, because I managed to get in the Navy. But I was only in the Navy for two years. It was uh, just before um, D-Day. Um, I had to... Um, I was sent up to Scotland for um, initiation. You know, they check you to see if you're fit to be in the Navy. <laughs> and um, we, I think we were there about two weeks, and all, all, all we did was mostly lectures on uh, they teach a Navy tradition. And uh, then uh, I said uh, I wanted to be a bookkeeper because that's all I knew, and they gave us little exams to see and then after that if they accepted you they gave you your uniform and uh, each like uh, they gave you um, a badge for your arm. I, I was a, a, what they called a, a writer so I had a W and uh, I was always sorry a lot of the girls took um, uh, different things like coding and you know it was all so different that you know, and drivers any of course hardly anybody could drive in England in those days there was no uh, gasoline but it, if you could drive a car that was a marvelous um, training because uh, they had to know how to strip a car or even a truck I, I had a friend in the army and she used to drive prisoners of war around well if you had trouble with your truck you had they had to know how to fix it from Scotland. Yeah. Once they decided what you're going to do and gave you a uniform, um, I was <coughs> excuse me. I was sent to London. There was a college in London where we had to train uh, in the navy way. And you know, you're young. You can't imagine it now with computers. But everything we did was mental. We didn't even have um, an adding machine. And we paid all those men, and they were paid uh, like a daily, they got, I, I have no idea how much, but a daily base. Then you would get a few more uh, coppers for your badge, and then all your punishments 
like if you were late. I mean, it was, they were very strict. Well, we had to be in at 10 o'clock, I think. Twice a week we'd get a, what we called a late pass. That was till 11 o'clock. But if you were late, your, your punishment was, your pay was docked so much. And that was all done. By hand, we had two, two of us, uh, a chief petty officer and myself, and we kept identical books.